Commence and Colors Ancient, the Spartan Army. This is the last expansion in the Commence and Colors Ancient series, a series that they really fell in love with and they just find it so uh, fun to play. Not exactly a war game by, you know, strictly Grignardish uh, terms, uh, by strictly Grignardish parameters, but definitely it is a very fun war themed game. So this is the last expansion. The Spartan Army allows you to fight battles that had the Spartan Army as a protagonist back in the day. Uh, it also contains blocks that allow you to refit components from the first expansion of the series. In fact, this is not a standalone game. It does require the base game to play and not only that, it even requires the first expansion. So it is the expansion of an expansion. I have to say the first expansion is not that easy to find these days. Well, scratch that. It is easy to find if you're willing to spend a lot of money. So I hope the GMT will consider uh, reprinting this game, which is as of now sold out. And maybe there will be more people that will be ultra interested and they will be able to play this game. Maybe the fact that there is this expansion that requires that one will also uh, revamp interest for the first expansion. Anyway, since you're watching the review of an expansion of an expansion, I imagine that you're probably familiar with the system if you are not uh, there is my video uh, about the base game that can give you the general gist of the system and the game. So what I'm going to do today is not to give you a general overview of the Commands and Colors Sanction series, but to show you some of the battles that you can play with the components that you find in this expansion, and then I will tell you my impression about those. Let's start with the Battle of the Thermopylae because, let's face it, if you buy a game about the Spartans, that is the battle that you want to fight first. Actually, the game includes two scenarios about that battle. This is one of them, called the Middle Gate. Here you have terrain being restricted by a line of impassable mountain axis here and impassable sea axis here. And here you have a line of ramparts where the Greek army is defending against the incoming Persians. Uh, there are a couple of special units that are featured in this scenario. There you have the Persian Immortals. Uh, don't be scared, they're not really immortal. They go down like anybody else if you just hit them hard enough. Um, and I use those black blocks to identify them. But there is something special about them and that is that they are medium infantry that still can use range combat and that makes them more versatile than regular medium infantry. Here on this other side you have another type of special unit and a more interesting one which is the hoplites. They come in two flavors. You have the Greek hoplites here on the left and the Spartan hoplites here on the right. The main difference as you can see is that the Spartans are represented by five blocks per unit which makes them harder to eliminate. Also all hoplites can be ordered by mounted charges and mounted movement cards. Of course, uh, on top of that are cards that would regularly activate medium troops or troops in that area. So that makes them more versatile. They can be activated more often and more easily than the regular medium infantry. The battle overall, well, this is a typical last stand situation, numbers for the Persians versus quality and position. It is probably going to be a little bit of a bloodbath for the Persian player, especially at the beginning when the Persian player is trying to uh, crash the line of the Greeks. Later things may change because sooner or later after the Persian player sends wave after wave after wave of units against the Greeks, sooner or later the Greeks will start suffering casualties. They will not be able to cover the entire line. There is a rule that says that when a Persian unit takes control of an X containing a rampart or takes control of the fortified camp X and the unit is there at the beginning of its turn, then the terrain tile is eliminated, that defense is destroyed and the Persian player gains a victory banner, so one point closer to victory. This is the second scenario of the game to cover the Battle of the Thermopylae. This time we see the battle from the grand tactical point of view. As you can see, terrain creates strong restrictions. These are 
all axes that are impassable and so of course all the hexes with the C and well this precisely as you would expect creates narrow corridors that the Persian player has to deal with. Uh, the Persian player outnumbers the Greek player enormously. I mean the Greek player only has six units. Yeah that's right six units and two leaders. Now look how many more units are available there for the Persian player. Nevertheless the very narrow space that the Persian player has available to maneuver is a huge obstacle. There is almost no way for these units to move around and I almost think that the Persian player has to sacrifice some units to, uh, to have them destroyed by the Spartan hoplites just so that the other units have enough room to maneuver and to attack. Here you only have three units, yes, but they are the Spartan hoplites, five blocks per unit and they're defending behind ramparts so these guys are hard to take down. Things may look a little better on this other side where uh, there are Greek units that are represented only by four blocks each not five and there are no ramparts but on this side the Persian player does not outnumber the Greek player nearly as much as on the other side. So actually the two sides present uh, different types of problems and well this is going to be an interesting challenge especially for the Persian player this is a short scenario uh, it only takes six banners to win the game and this um, creates an advantage for the Greek player because in this way the Greek player has a chance of inflicting uh, enough damage on the opponent to steal a victory before the uh, Persian player manages to wear out the uh, Greek units enough to win the game the battle of Mikale it still is Persians versus Greeks but this time the Greeks are the attackers. In fact when a Greek unit takes control of a Persian camp, there are three of them, uh, then the camp is removed, the Greek player gains a victory point, a victory banner and also the Greek player can replace a Persian auxiliary unit with a Greek auxiliary unit so that is pretty neat. There are a lot of advantages to be gained uh, for the Greek player by taking control of those axes and that means of course that there is a certain pressure on the Greek player to attack. The Persian player will probably have to take advantage of the terrain features to uh, increase his chances of being able to defend the camps. There is that river there which is fordable, yes, but still of course um, will affect combat. And also you have a group of hills here which again may reduce the combat uh, effectiveness of some units. And the Persian player may really want to take advantage of, of these features, especially in this area here where there are the two strong Spartan hoplit units, the ones that are represented by five blocks, and so uh, being able to reduce their uh, combat effectiveness thanks to terrain, of course, is a good thing if you're trying to defend against those. Overall, a nice scenario and definitely a nice change of pace uh, after the Thermopylae scenarios. It is good now to have more mobility, but still interesting terrain features to take into account. The Battle of Delium, which shows you that you do not need the Persians to have a good old fight. You can just have the people of Greece jumping at each other's throat, and they're perfectly able to do that without any encouragement from the outside. Here you have the Boeotians, and on the other side you have the Athenians. There are some terrain features such as hills, woods, broken terrain, but overall this is a pretty open scenario, meaning that there isn't a clear uh, attacker-defender role that is assigned to the players. It really depends on how the players want to play the scenario, how aggressive or uh, careful they want to be in different areas of the board and you may have an area of the board in which a player is a defender and then another area in which the same player is the attacker and the roles may switch throughout the game. The Boeotian player has an important unit here, the Sacred Band, which I indicate with that black block there. That unit is represented by five blocks so it is harder to eliminate than regular infantry. Also that unit can ignore a flag that is rolled against it and can use leader symbols as hits against the opponent. So basically it acts as if it has a leader permanently attached to it. Because of this probably the Athenian player will want to concentrate a powerful attack against that unit or simply 
the Athenian player may decide to maneuver units in such a way as to avoid contact with that unit and to concentrate an attack on maybe this area, which is much less protected than that area. The Battle of Amphipolis with Sparta versus Athens. Here the Spartan player has some pretty powerful units represented by five of his his uh, oplets. Uh, also, as you can see, the map is narrowed by this river here and by the city walls uh, that cannot be passed with the exception of the hexes that contain gates. And so that already places the, uh, the contendants particularly close to one another, reduces the uh, room where things can be done. Very important is that, yes, the uh, Spartan player has strong units, but the Athenian player has small units. And having a high number of units here is important because the Athenian player has the option of gaining victory banners by exiting units through those three hexes there one victory banner that is one victory point for each such unit which is huge that can really help so considering that the spartan player moves first in this scenario the spartan player probably will want to try to block the advance of the Athenian units are trying to exit from that direction because as you can see they already start pretty close to that area and so probably there will be a first clash of shields around this area here but then things can go in different directions the Athenian player can choose to exploit his higher numbers to have units that are sneaking around uh, and past the uh, Spartan units that are trying to block this area here or the Athenian player may try to concentrate an attack against some of the units that are left here in this area but really there are some powerful units here so I do not know that that really is the best course of action for the Athenian player. Certainly this is a scenario that is given a specific dynamic quality by the rule that uh, helps the uh, Athenian player gain points by exiting so there's an intrinsic drive towards that direction. Overall the scenario is pretty dynamic and it plays differently from the other ones that I've played before in this expansion. Some expansions alter the original game entirely or significantly and there are other expansions that actually give you more of the same. I often tend to prefer the latter rather than the former. If I enjoy the original game, I want to keep playing the game. I just want materials and components and scenarios that will allow me to play the game more and more so that the game stays fresh. This is definitely an expansion that falls in that category. This expansion does not introduce um, incredibly new concepts. There are the hoplites, yes, both some <clears throat> Spartan hoplites which are particularly strong, and then you have the family of the, the family of hoplites in, in general as a category as a general group and those can be activated by specific cards and then you have a lot of specific units that are used in these or that scenario units such as the sacred band that have specific rules so uh, you definitely have new units that will allow you to create situations that you did not have before that of course you have to factor in units that you have to work around to be able to uh, <clears throat> accomplish your goals but the general frame, the overall uh, concept of the game definitely is not altered by the presence of these units. Uh, but you have new units and you have new scenarios. You have a lot of those scenarios. The ones that I showed you really are just a small minority of all the scenarios that you can find in, in the scenario book and that you can play with this expansion. And there really is a large variety here. Scenarios are very different from one another. I'm pretty good impressed by uh, the Thermopylae scenarios, especially by the Millgate scenario, because, let's face it, that is a battle that's particularly hard to represent because of the static frontal nature of the theme. It is easy to have a battle that just devolves in a brutal and repetitive uh, action. Not here, because, especially in the Middlegate scenario, you have uh, terrain and position of the units and capabilities of the units and command cards that really go together well to give you an experience that still is full of nuances and full of interesting uh, challenges still it is an experience that is fun to play so I was really impressed by by that by managing uh, by how the game manages to create an interesting uh, game out of a theme that can be potentially pretty dull um, so overall this is not an expansion that definitely will change your opinions about the game if you did not like the game before I don't see any way how this expansion can change your mind but if you did enjoy the game from the base game or from some of the expansions I think that you're going to have a lot of fun with the battles that you find in this expansion